Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. Okay, so in today's video, it's time for a new handheld. This is called the XGB35. So what is kind of weird with these handhelds, there are so many of those unknown brands out there. It's absolutely a craziness. So this thing comes with two gigabytes of DDR3. It's also so convenient if you're going to be putting a sticker over this. Oh boy. So let's remove this freaking sticker so we can just actually showcase what's underneath. Because what is interesting that the sticker itself also shows over here that this thing comes in a 50 milliamp battery. But let's do a little bit of one peeling off and, and let's see what they have to say on the hair. So this thing supports two player pers person battle, like two players person battle. Oh, okay. Alright, see, let's just support multiple simulators and the CPU is in 7051. That makes no sense whatsoever. The system is Linux, so this is going to be more like the cheap diversions. Uh, yeah, there are three colors out there, white, black and purple. And I ordered myself the purple version. And that has to do because I just love these translucent-ish like purple editions. Come on, look at this. This looks awesome. <laughs> Okay, but what are we getting inside? So we're getting a mini USB, like how freaking retro is that? The toilet paper manual, the handheld game console, user manual. Yeah, that doesn't explain a lot, just some basic like jibber jabber about the device itself. Uh, but most of them, it's going to be not a yeah, really interesting things. Most of the thing I will also show you and crappy headphones. We don't see those things very often, crappy headphones. But let's do a chit chat about the device itself. So this is a very interesting overall as a configuration. So they went for the four shoulder buttons and yeah, there was not a lot of differences in the height. So like the first generation of laser devices, they had the same issues at the back or finding a speaker and this thing is quite loud. So you can really see over here that we're having one tiny battery, but it seems to be having a 2000 milliamp where the sticker says like 1500. Okay, that's interesting. Overall, we're having over here no connections whatsoever because the over here at the right side we're getting the power an option for micro sd card and the reset at the bottom we're finding some interesting connections like an hdmi mini then we're having over here the headphone jack and usb and the mini usb for charging but particularly when it comes to this particular port i just wanted to see what happens if we're going to be plugging in the hdmi and the usb can we use this thing like in game box all right, so let's do a chit chat about how comfortable this device is. So first of all, the configuration is weird. We have seen this before. I think it was with the POW Kitty having the two analog sticks and they chose for the analog sticks of the slider kind. And I am not a bad, I'm not a big fan of these things, but however, there's nothing to do about it. The D-pad itself does have a very nice curve to it, but it has a very long travel and a lot of resistance underneath. Select start, escape and the volume over here. And then of course, last but not least, the ABXY. And if you're going to be looking at this, this is absolutely very strange configuration and not comfortable at all. So the reason why, because if you're going to be using this with the D-pad, or an analog stick, you, I find it such a weird configuration that they put the ABXY button at the right bottom corner. That is so weird. But first let's power it on and let's see how the manual will look. Is this the same crazy like stuff that we have seen before with those first generation X handhelds? Oh man, they should ban those things. Oh man, you can just see the LED at the front. That is very bright and very annoying. But it boots up very quickly and here we're finding the menu. It is slightly different now. So this is more like one of those handhelds. It's just a plug and play situation. And I mean particularly when you're looking at the software, there is no tinkering needed. Just, just like turn this thing on, select your emulator and just play your games. But let's chit chat about the PlayStation emulation because this is a quite interesting and strange story. So I wanted to try to boot up Tekken, but that doesn't work at all. It doesn't boot up. Maybe this is just a general problem when it comes to the emulation or the, listening, the, the file itself. We do have the option for changing this. So that is quite important having like multiple disc games. But let's say you're having Pandemonium over here. So let's boot it up. Some games will boot up, some don't. And it's absolutely a weird shenanigans going all the way. But how about the display itself? The display is quite good, actually. So I'm surprised that they added a good display for once. But how about the overall emulation performance? That is going to be a different story. So pressing the shoulder buttons here, we're having the list, history, favorite, and file. And with file, we do have like different options. For example, we can get into the files and getting some videos going on. I have no idea what, what is actually on this thing. There's just some random, random stuff. Let's lower the volume over here. And in here we're finding all kinds of weird video files. Let's see what is this. 
So the overall, let's say, performance of watching some videos is quite good. And I don't see any problems going there. So it's kind of nice that we can even watch some videos. And the display itself, it's, yeah, it's quite good. Okay, so besides that, having all kinds of different, let's say, options. What is kind of weird? You can see, like, I'm moving over here with favorites. But it just stays on this menu. So you need to press the A button for going back. And then we can switch between, let's say, some other listing. How is with the emulation performance and what are we getting there? This device has, let's say, the simple things like 8-bit, 6-bit and some arcade. With arcade, uh, the more demanding games like Killer Instinct, Tekken Mame, those who are not on here, they will not work at all. And going to the next page, because you have two pages over here. We're having music, photos, dictionary, and in here I find the settings. Settings, we're having display settings, brightness, can we change out there, powering off. Okay, idle time and sleeping time can be adjusted. File sorting mode. That's kind of interesting that they added this. And then having the language and advance with some information. Here we're finding the storage, the number. This is actually version number one. The key tune can be changed to off and one other version. Format the internal memory, don't do this. Seriously, like if you're going to be doing this, everything will be actually, <laughs> what it says, it will like wipe everything and reset. It's going to be resetting all of the settings. But that's actually what it is when it comes to the menu. And let's boot up a game and let's see how that actually works out. So let's choose GBA, Inherit Gaming, Building Games and Eternal Memory. It's kind of weird that they have two different choices. Uh, let's see, Eternal Memory. And this is actually the SD card, I'm guessing. That is not implemented. You can boot up a game like that. Just boot it up a couple of seconds without any problem. Pressing the escape button will give you the special menu, giving you the quick load, quick save and the settings in here. Sound output, and that's kind of weird that we have the option for on and off screen size. And that is kind of cool that we're having scale over here. So an SPS ratio has been implemented. And let's go back to the game. And whoa, yeah, okay. That is not the way how we actually want to screen size. So let's put it on full. I don't know what's going on with that, but okay, that seems to be working fine. But that's kind of weird. So we're going to be testing that particularly part out with the SPS ratio with different emulators. But not be surprised that it's going to be giving us a lot of issues. So let's start off with some NES and Battle City. I do wonder about one particular thing. It's like how does it actually work when it comes to the SPS ratio? Because that was kind of weird. Whoa, that flashing thing was not supposed to be happening. I also know what's going to be on what's happening with the freaking like audio. Do we need to hold it? Or do I need to go out of the, oh, there we go. So in the game itself, it doesn't work at all. That is some weird shit going on. Seriously. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to see what happens if you're going to be doing the express ratio. Oh crap, I, Ah, oh, they completely like swapped everything around and I mean particularly when it comes to the A and B situation because B is entering and A is going back. It's so freaking confusing. But what I actually wanted to try is going to the settings and having the screen set to scale. Let's see how that looks with a different emulator. Oh. Okay, so with NES seems to be working just fine. That flashing thing is not good. That is not normal. Okay, everything seems to be working just fine when it comes to this. Okay, so when it comes to NES emulation, also the SPS ratio, that seems to be working just fine. So that's absolutely great. I did notice when you're setting this to the SPS ratio, it will automatically put every single emulator in that certain overall, let's say, SPS ratio. So getting into the Game Boy Classic, you do see some glitches going on. That is not like it's supposed to be. So I cannot really like, enjoy playing these weird Game Boy games. Yeah, okay, so it's glitching all the way. So let's go back to the normal settings. Screen size, full screen. Let's see if it still has the same problem. Okay, so the problem is actually when you're going to be putting in the SPS ratio in, it's going to be having the same weird glitches going on. So that is quite unfortunate. And let's try this Tetris Flash game. Never, ex I have never seen this before, by the way. But let's go to the settings again. Let's see what happens. It's going to be screen sizing to scaling and put it return game. And here you can just see that it seems to be working just fine. Yeah. 
no glitches. And oh, here we have. Yep, it started to glitch again. So that's absolutely a general problem. But it's kind of weird that it took quite a long time to actually start glitching. So let's move on to some 16-bit overall emulation. But it seems to be they completely messed it up when it comes to the emulation performance of 60-bit. Oh boy, this is such a bummer. One of my favorite systems. So let's go back to the full screen. From now on, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Let's reboot it again and let's see if there's going to be having a better overall performance. No, I can see it from the start that it's going to be absolutely horrible emulation performance. You know, and that's the problem with these, let's say, low budget things from AliExpress sometimes that you just don't know what you're getting. And this is just one of the reasons why I started making these reviews to basically warn you about these crappy products because this is just unplayable. So let's move on to some Game Boy Advance. So when it comes to SPS ratio, it's going to be completely messed up, but we don't really actually need like SPS ratio option when it comes to these, let's say, devices. So far, so good, no problem whatsoever. And we do have some great emulation performance going on, but we do have some small delay. Yeah, we do have audio delay. Oh, so where the speed of the emulation is good, but we have the issue of the audio delay that we have seen many times before with these cheaper devices. <sighs> Moving on to some Neo Geo, and there are actually two reasons we're going to be using this particular game. One is that we're going to be testing the D-pad, and two of course the emulation performance. But so far I can just see in here that everything seems to be working just fine. Uh, the D-pad is quite awful to a certain point, that it's more like a feel thing. And what I wanted to say is that we're actually going to be playing this. You see that I do have to struggle to actually get some moves out. Where I personally prefer to play with the analog stick. But the analog stick is just as worse because it's absolutely horrible, those slider joystick thingies. So for controls and fighting games, this is not the way I want to play. But we do have some great overall performance when it comes to emulation of Neo Geo. I'm quite surprised by, let's say, the performance of this tiny speaker at the back. I can just even feel it vibrating, that is how loud it actually goes. Also here with MAME we do have some great performance, no problem whatsoever. And see that's the thing what I don't get. It's like, is nobody testing out these products? Because some of the platforms are just unplayable with a massive overall delay or let's say when it comes to just the overall emulation performance. For fighting games the D-pad is quite nice, I can tell you that. Okay, but let's get into the main situation. And I can just hear that we do have like a huge problem when it comes to, let's say, the audio itself. Where the speed of the game is great, you can just hear the music sounds kind of weird. Yeah, it's absolutely strange. Or this is just a different way to play, but... I can remember that this game was completely having a different soundtrack. It sounds so off. Okay, but after some time it seems to be booting up. But let's get into the gameplay and let's showcase how it actually works out. Because that is the thing with these devices. Sometimes you do find some great performance. You can just see that so far so good. And that is the thing I don't understand, like why, where, where are they going wrong with this? Because we do have some great overall performance with PlayStation. So for PlayStation is kind of cool, so if you're searching for a really cheap device, we do have the option. But I don't know if the emulator running on this supports every game, because Tekken doesn't warn at all. Maybe it has to do something with the file, but Pandemonium seems to be working just great. But is it something you should pick up for PlayStation emulation? It's very, like say, debatable. Because there are so many ways you can now play PlayStation 1. Another thing I wanted to see what happens if you're going to be messing with the SPS ratio and HDMI out. Screen size, let's see what happens. Let me turn to the game. Okay, that seems to be working just fine. So let's plug this thing into the HDMI port on top and let's see if this functionality works in the game or do we need to reset it or whatsoever. Okay, so let's get into the HDMI part. So I'm going to be using a converter. What's kind of weird that we do have this on the bottom part. So yeah, that's not going to be very convenient. But however, let's plug this thing in. Let's see what happens. If it's going to be booting automatically into the device itself. That would be great. 
I see that it's going to be signal. Ah, there we go. Okay, so the S plus ratio doesn't work for the TV out. So far, I can see. That's absolutely awesome. So we can just enjoy yourself. Let's double check it. Settings, screen size, scale. Nope, 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 nope. So the, it's kind of interesting that the software itself doesn't really work when it comes to, let's say, the TVO function. So, and then is the, of course, the other thing that we can check out. So what happens if you're using this with a controller? So I'm getting the X-Input Xbox. The reason why, because most devices are compatible with this. Okay, so let's plug this thing in. So it will automatically show maybe something. It doesn't show anything at all. So when it comes to this situation, maybe we can reboot the game itself or the emulator just to see what happens. We don't have anything going on. So it looks like this thing doesn't want to be like configured at all, but that's quite unfortunate. So when it comes to the controller, that part is quite difficult to get this thing to be working as in a game system. Could be cool, like to plug this thing in and just play it like that. Okay guys, so let's do a quick teardown of the device. There are only four screws that we need to be removing. And next up we can just lift it open. It's quite interesting construction. So the major problem with these cheaper devices is mainly that we're having the problem that we have all stuff like soldered into this. Because if you need to replace the speaker, because, by the way, this speaker is absolutely like a huge one. Yeah, we don't have like an option fairly easy. The same goes for the battery. It's a very tiny one. I think there's even some space for a big one, but yeah, these lithium batteries are quite expensive. So for like say getting cheap devices out on the market, they're just choosing for a small one. It will give you a couple of hours of play time, but don't expect a lot from it. Over here, they made this decision for membranes and not micro switches that we have seen with different, let's say devices. And yeah, they put it on some double-sided tape to level it up. But besides that, there is nothing much you can actually see when it comes to the device itself. Also there, most of the time of the chips they're using in these things are just weird or send it off. So tear down and also like I say maintenance wise, we can do it, but you need to do some soldering and particularly looking at the connections. It's a very strange one, simply because when you're looking at the way how they solder and everything over here. Yeah, it's really strange. Simply because, look at this, like the, 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 the plus wire is actually like crossing over the minus wire. So if this thing is getting some damage, you can short circuit this absolutely. So the way how they made this is very strange. They should put it at least like that. There we go. That's much better. Let's put it that way. I think at this point it's safe to say that it's one of those, let's say, X series devices where the interface has been significantly improved in many different ways. This device is absolutely one hot mess. Let's say poor emulation with some of those data platforms and Nowadays, with so many different choices, this thing is not even worth picking up. You should spend a little bit more money and get yourself an Embernic because you're going to have like so much better value and also overall emulation performance. Where this thing does have a great performance for PlayStation 1, I think it doesn't really justify the price point you're paying for it, even if this has like an HDMI support. I couldn't get this like controller to set up so far, but yeah, no plug and play situation there. Thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing, and it will be great to see you in the next video.